Then the last one will be keeping the customer machine uh, up to date, like uh, firmware uh, configuration of the machine. Uh, you can also configure the remote data backup and restore to avoid data loss. Then you go. Uh, the the other setting is uh, consistently manage the device configuration based on the organization uh, requirement. Uh, okay. So the ultimate goal for the ECC actually is to improve for customer satisfaction. Okay. So with this, you can enable a proactive service organization. So here, you can change the the customer reviews on how your service organization runs okay and to reduce multiple service call because you can automate certain errors uh, to self-diagnose or uh, self-repair but then the next will be to reduce the number and the time on site service call so because of uh, automation um, you can reduce the number of call and then um, you because you already have the information of the machine, then you send the right person to uh, repair the right issue. Yeah, so you doesn't need to go to on site and then cut down the frequency of it. Maybe one visit or two visit, you can uh, with, I mean, restore the customer machinery. Next is to automate process whenever it's possible. Okay, like committer reading, all those you can automate. And to enable a consistent of the best practices, so when you have the best practices of the machine, and you can implement throughout the uh, region or the branch of the organization or uh, throughout your service uh, level, okay? Then also this will provide a platform uh, to perform analysis of the machine remotely. Okay. okay. Uh, let's come to the uh, ECC installation. So the installation uh, will have two steps. First of all, is on the portal, the ECC portal. Then the next one will be on site of the on the machine. Okay, first let's look into the portal first. So in so all this uh the firewall that yeah, we need to add in um if your customer have a firewall all this IP information uh you need to ask the uh, IT to write this uh, if you have uh, additional um. Uh, so cost supporting, uh, you need to please let us know. So, so customer that without firewall can jump to this uh this step. So the machine itself must set correctly to your local time. Okay, to your local time. Okay, on the ECC web portal. We need to prepare the uh, MFP information uh, into the CSV format, uh, such as the service, uh, the serial number, the machine model name, and the customer information. Okay, then all this information will be saved in the CSV format. Later, I will show you what is the CSV format and what is the field you need to fill in. Once it's done, you can import uh, all this MFP information into the ECC through using the web, uh, user web interface. Okay. The supported internet browser will be the Internet Explorer, uh, and then Chrome, uh, the Google Chrome, Firefox, and uh, Safari. So once it's import, then on the uh, on the site, 
On the side, you need to enable the MFE to communicate with the ECC server, cloud server, okay? From uh, service code 083820, configure this to 1 to enable the ECC functionality. The service technician needs to be on site to enable this service code for one time only. Once enable the MFP will reboot and will with the network connectivity connected and the ECC uh, the internet connecti connectivity okay, the MFP will attempt to register to ECC. One is successfully registered. We have to come back to the ECC portal to manually verify the connection before the machine will start sending service data, okay? And uh, in the installation report will be printed on the MFP. Once uh, we show you the details of the connection and the registration status is okay or fail, okay? So you will know uh, the uh, machine has been enabled correctly uh, or not, okay? So these are the two steps uh, that you need to check to, to establish the MFP connection with the ECC. So the ECC device combination communication uh, contain all these trial pro process. Okay. On the default communication time of 12 a.m. So all this process will, uh, well, when you turn on the machine, all this process will be run one time, okay? So you can refer this um, presentation for all the trial pro process, okay? And the supported MFP um, will be constantly update. Um, then we will ask you to refer to the Disney Avenue service bay uh, manual guide for the ECC for the ECC guide system overview we will list it there okay so you can download this file from the service bay okay okay let's come to the user roles and the permission to access the ECC portal then we will be assigned so um, two roles here, a service manager and the service engineer, okay, for your operation. At, at the moment, service manager and the service engineer. Uh, or I can also update you to uh, service manager and meter manager, okay. Uh, both of those uh, will be used by uh, your organization. Okay, here we come to the um, permission of the uh, service manager and meeting manager role. Okay, what is the permission level and uh, what are the uh, functionality that you can access if you are logging in as a service manager and meeting manager. So here we you can uh, access to the data for uh, all the MFP assigned. Okay, you can. Uh, Set the device management control. I mean control, like uh, import device, verify the device, or even delete the devices from your ECC. Then next one is the policy management. You can create, delete, modify, and publish the policies. Then you also can uh, edit device communication time. The default is 12 a.m. You can uh, push change the timing. And um, as a service manager, you also can download the service file for diagnostic. You can edit customer information. Uh, after you register, the customer information you can change. Export the device list. So you can export the list of the devices registered to your organization and uh, for review or for your own report. You can access the uh, device error log. And uh, as a service manager, you also can create a master clone, restore and uh, backup 
the machine. Let's see. Next will be the device data and meter collection report. Uh, meter, meter manager role. And the lastly is the apply application license or UI uh, user interface configuration. Okay. These are the roles for the service manager and meter manager. So I, I explain here for the service engineer role. So the service engineer role with have a lower uh, priority. So um, you can only can access data uh, and they can read only devices or devices group that uh, are pointed to your, this service engineer ID. So they can verify device but cannot import device or uh, remove devices from the ECC. Service engineer also can download service file okay, for diagnostic. They also can edit customer information and export device list. Um, for the policy wise, they can only read only, so they cannot implement, but they can come up at and they also read only for the update queue. So there's a limitation for the service engineer. Okay. So how you log into our ECC web portal? So you go to the given link, okay, uh, the ECC AP Asia Pacific Toshiba Solution .com. So once you log in, or uh, we will give you, um, if you are newly registered, uh, there's a link will be sent to your uh, registered email so you can access from there. Uh, if you are a normal user, you are already registered. So you can log in from the given uh, URL, okay? So you need to key in the username and password. Username is your email address. Password uh, will be generated by the uh, server itself. So uh, we cannot change, um, we cannot assign to you. So you will be assigned by the server. So for your first login, you need to change your password, okay? The default password is for temporary, temporary for, for, for the first time login, okay? So these are the uh, steps. So you need to click on agree with the license agreement, press OK, and then you can access to the uh, ECC portal. So this is ECC portal. First, it will show you the all the devices that are registered to your organization. Then if you never register any machine, so it will be there's a no machine listed on the device. Okay, so you can see your uh, login identity on the top right corner. Uh, so you can see your ID, and you can log out from there. <laughs> you you want to know your roles? So under on the top left corner, there's a link uh, under the version. Click on it, it will show your user role uh, when you log into the uh, to the ECC. Then you will want to change, uh, you can um, see what is your current role. Uh, if you want to submit any change, uh, let us know. Okay. Okay, next, uh, how to navigate uh, the ECC. So this is uh, how to na na navigate the uh, ECC. Um, you have the, for the service manager, you can see devices, update queue, policies, report, and master clone on the top right corner. Okay, the navigation bar, you have all these one, two, three, four, five, five selection. Okay. Okay, this this how we import the machine uh, devices into the ECC. Remember the step one. So we need to uh, gather all your devices information, put it into the CSV format. One is done with the C uh, all the prepare all the fill in in fill up, and then using this CS CSV format, you import into the 
ECC using the ECC uh, web based portal. Okay. Here I will guide you how to fill in the uh, the field using this as a reference. Okay, make sure column A instant ID is always zero. Okay. So second column of B serial number. Serial number you refer to the machine serial number. Okay, physical serial number. So you always keep in a uh, capital letter. Okay. Then uh, column C model number of the machine. Okay. Please make sure it's the, the correct model number. D and E is the customer information. Look, this is compulsory. The one where we circle in red is a compulsory. So customer information, you can be various customer that are regist registered to your organization, like uh, banking, bank A, or, uh, or corporate corporate organization name a corporate organization b and follows by their uh, customer number uh, that you can assign to them customer id customer number and customer name all this you can assign to your customer okay customer id uh, for you to easier to recognize so when you do a reporting hey, when you extract all this information for your reporting okay customer number um, you can use it to relate it to your finance team for the billing code okay either one up to you you can use the customer billing code on the customer id account id or you can use the account ID for your reporting purposes. Okay, this is how you organize your data. Okay, description on the uh, column O, uh, you can put some simple description such so easy for you to recognize the machine location, physical location, uh, such as a uh, level one, level two, or finance department, or laboratory. So, in the first, in one glance, the service engineer um, in your organization, once they read the description immediate, they will know the machine is located at uh, the customer site, at, at which level or which, which department. Okay. Then, uh, service dealer account ID, service dealer number, and the service dealer name. This three column will be assigned by us to your organization. So it belongs to uh, Vision Tech. Okay, the ID, account, uh, dealer number, and the dealer name. The dealer name will be Vision Tech uh, or Vision. So I need to refer back to the registered information. So this is the information that we assign to you. So this is always fixed, always fixed, okay? And then uh, this value S and T also always fixed. So do not change. This is uh, the information of my organization. So because your data belongs to my organization, um, to Toshiba Tech Singapore, it, you also must register the fixed value that we provide to you. Okay. Then the rest, you can keep it empty. Okay. There's also additional column at the back of uh, after you. So you can leave it empty, all right? On uh, all these are optional. Address one of the customer address information. Okay, all these are the optional. Okay. The one we bracket in red is compulsory. Must have information before uh, input into the uh, ECC. When you fill it, the CSV file. Save it in the CSV format, then you can import into the ECC. Let's come to the uh, ECC uh, page, device page. So once you import the, in, the information of the MFP, it will appear into inactive tab. 
because the machine haven't activated on the field. So it will appear in the inactive tab. Okay. So you will see um, there's a two type different active and inactive, the separate tab. Okay. Here of the device page, we'll show you um, the selection of the uh, devices, serial number of the machine that uh, you have registered, firmware, okay, the firmware version, the list of the firmware version, we will show you also the customer registration that you have registered, here is for the ECC. Then, um, description of the device. Then next will be the policy. The next column will be the policy that implemented or uh, assigned to the machine. Uh, last connection, it will show you the last communication date or time uh, of the machine with the ECC. Then the last one it will be the status of the machine. So any policies uh, violation uh, have been triggered on the machine. Okay, remember that uh, all the machine that you import for the first time, it will go into the inactive tab. So inactive tab will show you the machine that you have imported and will show you the cloud registration status as not registered. Okay. After your service engineer or service technician went to the customer site on site, and able to zero a code and successfully register the machine into the ECC, it will show you registered on the cloud registration status. Okay. When you refresh on the uh, ECC portal, it will show you registered. And then from here, you need to click the verify, verify status, click on the verify before the machine will start sending uh, the service file or data file to the ECC. Okay. So when you verify, it will show you into the device tab. So it will be active. So this is uh, a navigation of the um, device page. So you can list out all devices. You can uh, click on the device action and uh, how you're going to search uh, for the devices. Okay, you can go for a one search and then search details of the serial number of the certain customer uh, organization, okay? So you can review this reference uh, okay, later when I share to you the presentation file. Okay, let's come to the device action. So remember that uh, when we collected the data of the devices, it will be hosted into the ECC. But how are we going to download the information or you want to trigger more information to be collected from the device is from the device action. So you click on the device, uh, select the devices that you want to cha change the setting or download. Click on the device action, come to device communication setting. Okay. So if you need to get more information from the um, from the machine, the default will be all this version information that check on the checkbox. So additional, if you require that such as a function list uh, and the NIC configuration data, print log, scan log, all this information which is unchecked, you can select from here, okay? Address book, address book only, right? All this information. You can request the machine to submit all this additional information on the next submission, okay? So once you have asked the machine to upload all those information, you can download the service file for your diagnostic, okay? Select the machine that you want to make changes or download, okay? And then select the download service file. 
So when you click on the download service file, it will pop up this screen. You can uh, select individual uh, file that you want, or you can download all for the for that particular machine. Okay. So with all this information, you into you can use it for uh, diagnostic. Okay. So this can eliminate the required requirement to travel to customer site just to uh, extract all this information or you you doesn't even need to interrupt your end user to assist you to download this information and send to you okay the okay, next we'll come to a policy after you create a policy you need to apply to the machine okay we also come to the divide action apply policy and then you select the policy uh, that related you want to apply to the machine or to the organization and apply it okay uh, there's a uh, two type of uh, policy individual or the group policy okay later we'll come into details on the policy so you also can uh, deactivate device from uh, ecc also from the device action you can uh, deactivate or decommission the devices so please remember uh, read the details if you deactivate the device you can reactivate it later on or if you select decommission the device it will erase the data and and the, and delete from the uh for the ecc okay all the all the data will be removed from the ecc Next will be permanently delete the device. This is also an option. You can uh, delete the information. Okay. Okay. You using the uh, ECC, you also can group uh, the machine. Okay. Uh, you can create a new group for the machine. Like um, you can uh, group it in your customers base okay you can group it so it's easier for you to manage or you can assign this group to your engineer to, to for them to manage okay or to monitor so for the policy page the managers you need to look into this okay here you come to the policy page you can create policies new policy okay what is policy is a uh, policy um, of the category of a device error processing communication firmware update all right all these are the information that you can um, monitor or you can ask the machine to install or, or set, set into okay so do you have uh, seven type of policy you can create First will be the firmware update. Okay, you can set firmware update. And now uh, second will be the device error processing. So any processing, um, you can automate it or you can just trigger it. Third will be the backup. Fourth will be the device communication. Okay, so the cycle you can change. Fifth will be customized. Custom will be uh, the MFP code setting uh, from 0, 05 code, 0, 08 code to 13, code 13. Uh, you can monitor or change value um, of the change value here. Six will be a department counters. Then you can instruct the uh, MFP to email the department counter based on the configuration to the specif specified email address last will be application so you can instruct the mfp to install or remove uninstall application uh, on the devices okay so seven type of policy that you can you can configure to communicate with the um, 
to, to monitor or to communicate on the machine. So seven types of um, policy. You have a uh, different um, file, uh, policy action. Okay, firmware update. You can select show violation. I mean, let you know, uh, let you aware that this machine is not up to date. So you can send your engineer or to to do the update, or you can do it manually. Okay, or you can automatically fix and update the ask the machine to automatically download the firmware uh, and then to up, update the firmware by itself okay these are the policy action that are available for all these seven type of uh, category policy category okay. for the device communication uh, the policy update will be after the communication or after the reboot. So you can choose either one. Okay. So for custom, you have all four selection. Okay. Well, the department counter only have show violation because you only need to capture the information from the machine. Okay. So the policy can be saved as draft or publish. What is the difference of the draft and publish? Draft is only for the creator to see. The creator can save it as draft and remain for the creator to see, apply and apply into the machine. Okay. This is for you to do testing. Definitely. So when you're doing testing, you save it as a drop. Okay. So once you completed the testing and then confirm uh, the policy run as you re require it, you publish it to all. So you want to publish it, all the service manager level can can use and can see the policy. Uh, including the service engineers can see. Okay. So all the service manager can apply, edit, or even delete the policy after you publish. Okay. So after you apply the publish policy, it will appear on the policy column. Okay. Remember back into the device page, it will show you the policy column. It will show that okay, what policies have been applied on the machine if you have published this policy. So this is an uh, overview of how you navigate the uh, policy page. Uh, a simple guide on how to create a policy. This is a, this is a create an individual policy. So you come to policy and then you create new policy and uh, you input the policy name related to uh, what action you want to take. Second, choose the category from the seven category, uh, which action you want. Uh, here we show the sample is the firmware update. Then you select the action. Remember the action that uh, you have on the action table here, action table. This one, yeah, um, for the firmware update, I have show violation or automatically fix. Okay. Oh, sorry. In this example, it only show show violation. So, it will check through the MFP after apply this policy, and it will pop up to my uh, not notification. It will show the violation of uh, um, this machine if I uh, if show that um it doesn't up to date to the firmware that um uh, I have selected, which is maybe the latest firmware. I'll check again to the latest firmware. Okay, then I apply this policy. Then save. When you save, um, it will show you the uh, policy status. They will come to, if you save in draft, it will bracket the policy name as draft. 
okay if you have published then uh you remove the bracket draw so as engineer uh service manager can edit policy okay you can duplicate or edit policy or even remove policy If you edit policy, you can change it from uh, publish or unpublish. Okay, automatically publish if you show to the entire organization. If you unpublish, so you recheck the policy back for editing. Okay. So here I also show you how um, the step of creating the policy in group. Okay. There's a sample a group name, um, what policies um, you want to set, configuration, firmware update, and then the communication time. Or you can set a customer custom policy of the 08 code. Okay. And then you save it. And after you create a policy, you need to apply to the machine. Okay. Remember to apply it to the machine from the device uh, tab. Okay, apply to the machine, and then the machine will uh, use this, run this policy, and check against the uh, the device setting or the their current status, and then will come back to you. Um, depend on the policy setting, it will come back to you with the uh, violation, or it will automatic fix the issue uh, depend on the policy you have created so, so update queues any update on the ECC uh, will be queued into update queue it will show on the update queue uh, for the next communication uh, to for the, for the MFP to communicate okay so if the MFP haven't download uh, the latest changes that you have you have set on the ECC, so we always show here. Okay, you can intercept by deleting the update, or you can monitor the 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 update queue. Okay. The next will be the uh, master clone page. So master clone, you can create a master clone. But uh, once you're done with the setting of the that particular model, you can come here and create a master clone. Okay. Which means you already have the machine set correctly. Uh, the zero eight code orders configured, and uh, firmware version is up to date. You can always create a master clone and then use this master clone to deploy to new machine of that particular model uh, using using the ECC. So you can uh, have the description of the clone you created then uh, you can review uh, when this was created the date of the creation then you also can manage by edit the clone or change delete the clone uh, the, the data okay. the report page, uh, reporting page is uh, moved for the service manager so the reporting page um, the information will be always in XML format uh, the information will be much more uh, relatable if you have a third party uh, reporting uh, platform so you can export all this external format to the third party and then uh, create a report for you. So then you have uh, access to uh, device code data, device error report for the last 24 hours, we show you the alert notification, uh, the log of the alert notification for the past 24 hours. Uh, the meter collection report, 
So we will be in XML format. Uh, also, you can see the non-communication device report that uh, for the past 24 hours, the, the machine had not communicated with the ECC. Okay. And the last one will be the ECC user activity report. So you can download a log, uh, the report log of the user activity, uh, user who access the ECC, and then what what action they have taken on in, in the ECC. So this is a view of how to configure all those uh, reports. So you can uh, send it to the email or you can send it to the FTP for your third party uh, solution to generate into a report. Okay. So these are the options. Okay, um, that's all for the ECC. I hope this um you quite clear with the um uh, the purpose of the ECC. If you have any question, please let me know. Mr. Lee, thank you so much for your time. And, uh, for a very clear presentation. So I'll give I'll give the floor to my colleagues, the technical team, to ask any question if they have it. Oh yes, sure. Oh, okay. There is alternative. Um, I have sent earlier. I did send the um. You, you can check on the chat box. Uh, the chat box here, meeting chat. I did send a link for your reply. I mean, um, to complete this training, please click on the link and then uh, submit the form. So if you have any question later on, you can also put it into the form and submit to, uh, to me. So I will compile it and then um, see how I can respond. I can help you on, on the question. Uh, for now, you also can uh, ask me question. Hi, Chi. Hi, John. Uh, uh, I would like to know how you make like reports. To make you just how to download the reports that you have already made. Um, sorry. I your background is very. Eh, I have a uh, hearing the heck echo, uh, background. So maybe you turn off the speaker first. Uh, yeah, much clearer. Yes. Uh, Sorry, I need you to repeat your question. Sorry. On the last page, you say that it is possible that someone can make a report. So I would like to know how you can export on your computer so you can use it for, for in the future. Okay. Um. Sorry. Uh, which report you meant? The last one, the report page. Oh, uh, the report page can be accessed by the service manager and then depending on which report you want, you can schedule a delivery and then assign an email and send it to the designated email or you can upload into the FTP. But please, please make sure that you know how to uh, access the XML format because the Report will be ex export into XML uh, 
language, which is uh, if you know how to configure, I mean how to uh, program the XML the, to extract the information from the XML, it's much easier for you to use this format to do to generate report. There also an another alternative method to I mean meet meter collection. You also can use the meter collection uh, module from uh, ECC. It depends on which information that you want to generate report. Okay. I believe that most of my distributor will use a uh, meter collection. Um, if my distributor have a third party solution which is uh, outside I mean, or internally you have uh, people or programmer that know how to use the XML format information extract the XML information into a re report which is uh, also you can come to here and extract the information or if you do not have um, personnel or uh, resources to so call to extract the XML data and then to generate report, you can use our meter collection uh, module. For the rest, um, the information you can try to configure it and then generate the report and send to your email. And uh, from there, you see you can have the data, and then see how you can use the data to uh, assist in your organization reporting. Okay. John, did I answer your question? Yeah, sure. You have answered. Thanks. Thank you. Um, any any other question? Um, yeah, we still have a bit of time. Yeah. Uh, one more question. Ah uh, yes. So, I would like to know the policies that is available to be applied in Toshiba printers MVP. MVP. Um, which one? For all this, uh, yes, yeah, you can apply to all Toshiba printers, uh, selected model. So you need to come to, um, moment. Yeah. Let's download this file from service bay. ECC guide system overview. We will show you a list of uh, models that supported. And uh, there's uh, some model that is uh, there's a limitation, which is uh, EBN model will be fully supported. Uh, all the function functionality in, in the available in the ECC. Certain model will have limitation. So please check uh, the, the menu the guide that is for our top available in the service bay. Manual guide. This is a manual guide. Okay, uh, I think it's, um, I complete the training. So uh, please go to the chat uh, and then uh, click on the form and uh, give me your reply and uh, uh, the questionnaire in the form and uh, submit. Uh, I'm going to expect to the number of participants uh, today and uh, to some, everyone to submit the, this reply, okay? Um, Mr. Albert? 
Can I, yes. uh, can I, can I conclude uh, today's session? Yes, if my team is uh, now satisfied, I just wanted to ask, um, to remind you to share with us the requirements to start using ECC because we are really committed. We want to connect all our machines to ECC. Sure. And I think, I think uh, is it, is it, um, are all our machines ready to accommodate uh, ECC? I believe, I believe all your machine is, can support ECC because all our Toshiba machine um, and then it should be the, the latest model. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. Then you shouldn't encounter much issue uh, when register the ECC. I will share with my presentation slide and uh, more additional and uh, the guide on the actual step by step how to uh, to import the machine into the ECC and to go on site trigger and enable the service code of the machine. So you use those guide review on the rep uh, on the reading material and try it out. If you encounter any issues or any um, support request. Please email to me, and I'm uh, happy to assist you on that. And if you need to another session, uh, such as please let me know um, which module that you would like to know in details, then I can develop the, the uh, so-called material and conduct a training on that. Sure. So again, uh, before we close, um I think you have seen that we have a new uh, number of uh, technicians in the team. Mm. Uh, you saw Damor, you saw Damasen, you saw Jean de Dier. Yes. I think you know about Jonathan, mm. and there are some others. Yes. But now we have um, appointed Mr. Damasen as the team leader uh, oh, of this leasing oh, okay. So in whatever kind of communications we be including him, looping him just to be aware of what is happening. Mm, okay. I no. need Mr. Albert here to uh, reply me on the email and then uh, give me all the list and then uh, the person in charge, uh, name, name and email. Then I will also provide you the uh, information in the past uh, that have been registered to the ECC portal and uh, user ID and, and uh, their roles. Please update me again on the ID and the user uh, list so I can make necessary changes and update and uh, register new uh, new user. Sure, sure. Okay. Okay, thanks Mr. Albert and everyone for mission. So, hope everybody take care of, uh, during this pandemic so um, god bless yeah thank you so much thank you thank you i'll send you the more information from the email sure sure yeah thank you everyone bye bye Thank you.
Zana hano turebe iwe ni bijeme ya